What about what about Ireland and Irish then? You're saying that, I mean, there's a, maybe in the Isle of Man a changing and favourable social political climate which has allowed Manx to uh, mm. evolve a bit and, and give it breathing space as much as anything else. Is that similar in Ireland, do you think, as uh, you know, sentiments um, and attitudes change? Well, most of Ireland, in, in the Republic anyway, the state has been dealing with the language since, really since the start of the 20th century, certainly since the 1920s. And so uh, the institutionalisation of the language is quite different. The, the history is quite different there. So it's been in the schools and it's been in state usage at different levels for four generations now as well. So uh, there's a passive knowledge of Irish in Ireland which doesn't exist in lots of other areas with, with minority languages too, which enables people who are interested in the language simply kind of to up their game a bit in lots of ways. It's much more easy, I think, to, to become more involved in Irish if you want to be in Ireland. But Having said that, I think the, the last 20 years or so in Ireland as well has seen a change and the similar thing which has been happening in other countries uh, has happened in Ireland in that there are, there's kind of a minority of people in Ireland who speak Irish regularly and I think if you speak Irish regularly now, even if you've learnt it as your first language too, it is an, it, it's an active, um, uh, it's something which is uh, conscious, it's a decision which you've taken and uh, because it's actually harder to do, there are less resources, there are less books. Um, it's you know uh, the challenges of bringing up children and speaking Irish and the whole world around them is is open to them in, in English. It's uh, very hard to to do that. So the number of people who actually do that, who speak Irish at home, and bring up their children speaking Irish, is actually quite restrained. It's quite a small number, probably less than a hundred thousand. Um, the census tells us there are seventy two thousand odd people who speak Irish every day. Mm and we don't know exactly what that means, uh, what it means to speak Irish every day, but I think it's a self-analysis and so people have more or less said we speak Irish a lot and so that's the box we're going to take. Mm -hmm. So if you take that amount compared to the 5 million odd in the country, or 6 million in the whole country, um, it's a very small percentage, but that other population there has enormous passive abilities in the language, So it, it's and it has kind of needs too. So you can see that there's a kind of an Irish speaking minority on one hand and then there's a very large number of people for which Irish is a heritage issue or um, it plays some ill-defined role in their life. I don't think it's something they, they think about when they're eating their porridge in the morning but uh, they kind of appreciate its presence you know? yeah. <laughs> and they, can, they dip in and out of Irish and it's that interest of the non-Irish speaking population of Irish which keeps the state interested really why it's still in the schools, why we have Irish language television, why we have Irish language radio. The market isn't big enough for it. And certainly the tax paid by people who speak Irish isn't big enough for it. So it's the, it's the people who are not active Irish speakers support for it, which is very important, really. What can be done to bring in that, that passive, that large passive group of people? Are they interested in becoming sort of activists and language speakers, or will they always remain passive? I don't know. I, I've been arguing for some time that actually they they don't. They they're actually quite comfortable with the with the way things are, which is uh, <laughs> something a lot of people are unhappy about. It's um, I think they have a possibility of speaking more Irish if they want to. And what would be good from a point of view of a planning perspective or of organisations who are trying to get people to speak more Irish is to try to get this very large pool of passive speakers to speak a bit more. And they probably would if the opportunity kind of came to them, mm -hmm. so they didn't have to actually look it out, look for it themselves. They didn't go searching for it. So if it was more easy just to speak Irish in the lobby of a hotel, or if you were going into the, I don't know, into government offices, or if you were going into the school or something, and there was more Irish speaking, you probably find people would speak a bit. I'm constantly amazed, actually, at the very high knowledge of Irish amongst people who can't speak it. They would, who don't speak it rather. They would, who have a knowledge of Irish, but if you um, if you push them a bit, they they have actually very good Irish. So they just um, have never had any uh, occasion to use it and haven't sought that occasion either. But they maybe did very well at school, or maybe they had one of their parents could speak Irish or something to it. It is qu it's quite interesting that you you have a passive population which disappears out of the census data and certainly not in the language movement and so on too. But it, it's there. It's uh, the the television, for example, that some of the. Uh, Irish language television, which um, was shown on the mainstream television, not the Irish language one, but the other, the, the main channels, they get viewership figures of up to 26% of the of the audience at the time now. Mm -hmm. They're subtitled, um, and so there is that. Um, people talk about piggybacking as well, that somebody was watching the, the uh, whatever was in before the news or something came on before, and the Irish program came afterwards, and they just carried on watching. But, you know, they can turn up too. The, uh, 
the Nielsen results tell us that there, there are this very, very large number of people watch these programs. So there's a lot of passive knowledge uh, in society. Uh, it would be good to get them to speak more Irish, but I don't think they're clamoring at the doors to do it either. You know. What about the um, the recent? Is it the twenty year strategy for Irish? Is mm. that is that about you know allowing you know um, more people or giving people more people the opportunity to speak Irish and and I know it's got you know sort of aims, isn't it? They're trying to achieve mm. so many more Irish speakers, but how, how about how are they going to go around doing that? Well, I'm not responsible for the twenty year strategy. <laughs> <laughs> or, or it's a it's an all party. It's a, it's a political document. So it's it was by the, the government, which, which fell recently, uh, put it together, but it went through various committee stages with all the other parties, so all the parties sign up for it. Um, I think it has some aims which are quite interesting and could be exploited very well, but like all things designed by committees and everybody's in favour, it's actually quite weak in, in lots of places. It doesn't really have specific goals, or if it does have specific goals, they don't tell you how they're going to get there. But the idea is to have um, more Irish speakers. The ultimate goal, I think, is to have more Irish speakers in the next uh, well, 20 years. Um, it's a little ill-defined as well. There's a lot, been a lot of criticism in Ireland to say that if you want to have 250,000 speakers or, or so, regular daily speakers measured by the census, and that there's a lot of this kind of contemporary idea that we have to have everything in metric so we can, we can find out if it's found its result or not achieved a result. Uh, well, 250,000 speakers is a lot more than the 72,000 now, but it depends still what you mean. Uh, we don't really know what the 72,000 daily speakers uh, are doing now. Um, if it just means saying a few sentences in Irish every day, then the 250,000 is easily achievable because there's 1.4 million in the centre say they can speak Irish a bit. So um, if they were to tell us a little bit more about what they mean by 250,000 yeah. speakers, uh, it's possibly achievable. A lot of people have been very critical, saying that you can't do that. You, know, you can't just you know, three or four times the number of speakers which you have already. Um, it depends what you mean. Yes. <laughs> you know? But there is, um, th there is, a, I think, probably increasing recognition in th from the state, from the institutional side, that Irish needs um, more support uh, in that you can't just leave it alone. And um, the market, which they often use about market terminology, the market isn't big enough for uh, to, to sustain newspapers and televisions and radios and schools and all these other things too. And so what the strategy does, I think, is uh, it reflects the times we're in in a way that uh, people agree that there needs to be a strategy. I don't think they're very good at designing strategies yet, but uh, maybe there'll be a revised strategy in some time with some slightly clearer goals. But it's a document which can be used, uh, depends how it's used. Yeah.